Is anyone here last year? Oh, no. Yeah, two of you. Brilliant, that's it. The one who said no was the one who was here before anyway. Last year was our first year, but this year the move, things have moved on a bit in the village, in the food village. Come on everyone, a round of applause. Come on, let's get it going. Again, again hostility, I'm getting a bit of hostility here. But I want to thank a few people, because I'm going to tell you what we're going to be doing tonight. And most of you know what's going on tonight, but I'll thank a few people. Firstly, Dow High Civil Engineering, who sponsored the event tonight. Come on. Helping to raise funds for White Kids Bootle, come on! That's got it, that's got it, that's got it going. So every penny you've got your ticket money, by the way, guys, was all, is all going to go to charity tonight, which is fantastic. So I'm going to say to you lovely people, on, a, on an ironing night, it's an ironing night, it's fucking ironing night, lads! Should be fucking ironing the kids, here we go, you're right, fella. Just don't give a shit about the show or me, just fucking wobble in there with your shandy, you know, right? Alright, he doesn't give you a fuck. I wish I had your confidence, just a yeah. body language for fuck off, you know, but right, right, right. Welcome, Seb, welcome. So every penny tonight goes to a fantastic charity doing local work, local work in the community with families and stuff. Come on, let's get it. Go, let's go, go. I am Brennan Yukompa. Ahead of us, oh, ahead of us we have five, can I say five, nine, nine fantastic acts, five, that's what I was going to say, five in the first half, oh let's do the running order, I love doing the running order, it always gets everyone getting like, fucking oh, hell, I'm into this now, are you alright fella? No you're not, no I didn't think so, your fucking face wasn't, <laughs> body language of talk to me lad, I'll stab you, right relax, look, you're holding a shit in that act, you... Did you hear that, everyone? He said that I'm holding a shit in. That comes under the clauses. You know you're in bootle when. And someone in the front row is just openly honest like that. I'm holding a shit in, lad, yeah. Nine months. <laughs> Wonder what was going on, fella. Right, right. So. It is, and we need to encourage, I'm going to tell you about what's going on, what the workshop's been about, because a lot of you are friends of the Axe tonight. Let's get behind them. Get behind them! Right, not a normal kick, you, not a normal kick. He just, he's going, I'm quite pleased with that, like, you're looking. Right. Applaud your honesty, mate, applaud your honesty. Right, so, so what we've got, five acts in the first half, come on. Then we have an interval. Bar's going to reopen. Last chance to get some grub in the village. Yeah, then we have four acts. And then straight, as soon as the, fin the show finishes, we're going to reopen the Mayflower. Come on. <laughs> uh, only six of you know what the Mayflower is. The rest of the room going, oh, what, oh, what, I'm not from around here. What is the Mayflower? It closed the little bar there that everyone... It's closed in the Strand of Mayflower. Look at him as if he doesn't know. He goes, fucking city bar, lad. City bar, lad, yeah. It's the bar, it's the bar. Okay, bollocks, we're not going in the... We're going to get our kit off and we're going in the canal! We're going to swim to Wigan! Get a pint in it and then straight back here, yay! Right. So that's what we're going to do. So if you don't know what's going on, I, mean, I know everyone knows what we've been doing. Over the last six weeks, all of the comedians on tonight, never ever done stand-up comedy before. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Never ever before. Over six weeks, I've been training them, teaching them, showing they've been writing their own material. Come on. <laughs> original, original, yeah. And, and the stage performance, dealing with fucking knobheads in the front row, mate. Been teaching them. <laughs> and, <laughs> <laughs> and I must admit, I must admit, you see, I've been going a while, I've done a few gigs, okay, this is not my first rodeo, sir, okay, but, but I've got to say, I've got to say, gigs in Liverpool, I mean, it's the hardest thing in the world, isn't it, a Scouts audience, Scouts audience, oh, come on, Scouts, give me some proper noise, give me some proper noise, <laughs> not getting much, who's not Scouts, give me some noise, <laughs> It's only still about 40%. What fucking planet are you lot from? Right? This spaceship just crashed and I got off in a minute. Right, right. The, the, the reality is when I first started, I started my career on a, on a comedy workshop and most of my gigs, there weren't gigs like all over the country. Like, there's a massive network of stand-up shows now. But that was mainly in Liverpool. And fucking hell, 
and it's the hardest thing in the world. A fledgling comedian, write my own material, not sure if I'm going to be funny. And scousers in the crowd, funniest people on the earth, right? Is it true? It's true. It's true, it is. It is. I know people say this, that we've always got something to say. I've seen some vicious heckles. Tonight, no heckling. You want to heckle? Heckle me. Heckle me. So let's do Let's get it back. Let's get it out of the way. I'm going to do a one, two, three. You can shout whatever you want at me. And then we can move on together to support the brand new comedians. Is that a deal? Is that a deal? Right, here we go. You're ready, everyone. He's fucking mustering one now. You can put your shin pads in and everything. Checking his studs. Here we go. What? Bit premature, that makes story of your life. Right, here we go. One, two, three. <laughs> you bastards. Right. Bit camp that was, Steve. Bit camp. Fucking bastard at the front now, eh? You fucking bastard. Ball bastards. Did you say ball bastards? Did you? Fucking, you're not mad behind, are you? Fucking, the eclipse is making its way over your head. Right. Right. Let's get out of the way. Genuinely, over the years that I've done stand up, I swear the best heckles have been in Liverpool. When I first started, I remember being at a gig at Rawhide, when run, Rawhide Comedy Club, anyone? Remember Rawhide? I was there nervous, fucking nervous, sitting in the dressing room. There's a guy there from America who was brilliant. I'm looking up to him, he had a silvery suit. He'd done, he'd done like all the cruise ships, a bit mainstreamy for that kind of gig. But I'm looking at him going, I want to be you, mate. I want to, when I'm a few years time, I want to be you. That's why he was fucking slick, he was dead confident. He was asking for all sorts of drinks brought to him and all that. Anyway, never done a gig in Liverpool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, get ready, get ready for this. So he did this thing where he had everything. He sung, he had magic tricks, and he throws this into the crowd. He asked the crowd, never been to Liverpool before, and he goes, uh, he goes, <laughs> he goes, he got his card deck and goes, I'm gonna do a magic trick, I'm gonna do a magic trick. They're slick, they're coming from Vegas. I'm gonna do a magic trick, he goes, name a card, any card, name a card. And some scouser goes, Visa, lad. Fucking okay, Visa. <laughs> Completely threw him, he's like, fucking okay, bottle. <laughs> <laughs> all, all the Lascouse mates go, fucking nice one there, Dave, nice one, fucking a piece, fucking a piece, fucking a piece. The best of all, the best of all, Scouse girls. In a comedy gig, I love Scouse girls. I love Sassy. Come on, you're in there, you're out there. Right? Look at them all, look at them, you're going. I love Sass, pissed Scouse girls. Vicious, fucking vicious. I did a gig, at, at the, the, the gig I used to run in Liverpool was called The Magnet. Oh, up at Hardman Street, yeah. Hot water in there, that, that venue I had uh, before, hot water, brilliant venue, brilliant venue. Anyway, cut to the chase, cut to the chase. I had a stag doing, which is always quite intimidating, about 18 lads from Wales. Any Welsh people in? No, oh, shit all, shit all. <laughs> Just had to check if it was, if, if, if the were Welsh in, Shemai and all that. Yeah, yeah, it's going holiday there, it's great North Wales. Right, anyway, but anyway. So anyway, this gang of lads, oh, they wouldn't stop talking. And thanks to the people over there for demonstrating the talking thing. Right, so they won't stop talking a comedy gig. And it annoys everyone. Would you agree, everyone? Yeah, it annoys the crowd, doesn't it? You've come to watch comedy and someone's rabbiting, someone's talking. And it can wind yeah. me. I mean, I'm, thank you, fella. <laughs> Fucking Muppet show here. Right, so, so, so. They're all gabbing, and I'm like that as the compare, going, lads, come on, everyone's paid the money, we want you to enjoy, we don't want to kick you out, we want you to enjoy the show. And eventually, they got with the programme, they all quietened down, watched the show, comedians on, great night first half, second half of the show, one of them starts talking again, piping up, giving it all that, yes? I didn't have to deal with them, because Scouse crowd self-police. Yes, self-police, yeah, exactly, yeah. From the darkness of the room, I just hear this Scouse voice go, who put 50p in the knobhead? <laughs> what a put down that is. That was the crowd. And then we got Bool. Let me do my phone ring on the first act. We got Bool in. Is Bool people here? Come on. <laughs> well, we did want to do this. We did want to do salt and tar to attract outsiders, right? Scousers again. Give me some noise properly. Let me go barometer. Hey. Okay, okay. Bool one lady. <laughs> Was it a five a bit much? We pri pri price everyone, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're right. And then, and then Southport Way, anyone from down the line on the... Anyone done the train? Anyone be come on the train? Do you know what's great about this train station at Bootle Strand? It's fantastic. Bootle Strand and Oriel Road are so close together that if you miss your stop, it doesn't fucking matter. It's any boundary 
Sometimes it is the shortest. Do you know what? Nationally on the National Rail, that distance between Oriel Road and, and the New Strand Station is the shortest gap between stations in the whole country. Not everyone knows this. It's fucking true. Sometimes you only do the six carriages in peak time. The train doesn't actually leave the station. It just, it just the doors shut at the strands and then it just moves about 20 foot and then fucking the doors open again and one ends at fucking Oriel Roads. Have you ever heard the guard? I'm not even sure if he's on the train anymore. There was a guard who was a legend. Has anyone heard this guy? Genuinely, a genuine question. If you've not, don't worry, it's not a quiz. <laughs> I don't know what can answer to this one, right? What's that? What? And he's gobbing off again. Right, well, between you and me, I know some of the staff at Mersey Rail. The management don't like him, but all the other staff think he's a fucking legend. Right. If you've heard him, if you haven't heard him, when you go on the train, there's a guard and a driver, two different blokes who come out with stuff, and it's hilarious. But I was coming right through this area. This was again years and years ago. And on the voice, Tony goes, this is uh, your guard. Uh, if you look out the left and right window, you're passing the Badlands of Bootle. He like does that kind of commentary shit. As opposed to, if you ever go on the, on, the, on the normal trains, like years ago with tannoy systems, it's all electronic now, but years ago you'd be at Lime Street and it's all echoing, you can't understand a word, and you'd be there with a crew or anywhere, and it'd be like, you'd be standing there with that, waiting for a train, and you'd be like waiting there, and the train's not coming, all of a sudden you hear, crew. See what? And that cancelled. You're like, fucking hell. You're trying to <laughs> interpret. You need an Enigma machine to understand the tunnel you know, announcements. Now it's all slick. It's electronic, especially on the trains. They've upped the game now. I went to London, and everyone slags off the traffic travel stuff in this country. The motorways, they slag off, slag off potholes, slag off the train system. It's the best. Two, two hours, 50 minutes from Lime Street to Euston is a brilliant service. Don't care what anyone says. We're coming in, into London, and I haven't been on the trains for years. I'm coming in, and over the tannoy comes the voice of the driver. It was nothing like that shitty, blah, 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 shit they used to get years ago. It's brilliant. It reassures you. You're like, like a pilot of a plane. You hear the voice, the voice, the... Yeah, exactly. I'm coming in here. This is Clive, your driver. We'll be... We'll be landing in Houston. Well, fucking landing. Landing in Houston Station in the next 15 minutes. The buffet bar service is still open. Be travelling at a height of about six foot. <laughs> May I remind you that the still time to get yourself a pie, a bap, maybe a cheeky lager. This was Clive, your driver. I'm thinking, wow, what a command. Fucking bro, this guy's been pretty brilliant, yeah? Mersey Rail, different story. Around the same time, when we had the cold snap, a long time ago, coming into town, and the heater was broken on the train. We're all freezing to death, but we're doing what we always do, us Brits, sitting there fucking moaning, murmuring, going, what, get me money back? Fucking hell, good shit. Fucking save away, get me fucking money back. The save away. You can hear people murmuring and moaning. Fucking hell, right to me, I Fucking shite, fucking murder me. Just all moaning, moaning. It was freezing cold. Over the tannoy comes the voice. Nothing like Clive the driver. Yes? This is the voice command. Look. This is Tony, you driver! On behalf of Merseyville, I can only apologise. Now, he did something that you hear in b and Ikea, you hear over tannoy announcements all over the country, and that is when someone uses a tannoy, they always try and throw a word in, a word they wouldn't normally use to appear more intellectual. And he did this, he goes, We can only apologise for the inclement temperature. You're like, fuck off! No way, mate, have you ever used the word inclement? But he did the whole thing. This is the whole thing he goes. On behalf of Merseyville, we can only apologise for the inclement temperature in the carriages. But if it's any consolation to you, I'm fucking freezing as well, right? <laughs> right, so here we go, here we go. Right, this is what we're doing. In a second, we're going to welcome on stage the first fantastic act. Come on. Remember... None of them are jumping out of the comedy aeroplane here with you lot, so we need support and a big round of applause now. We're going to welcome our stage first, let's go!
Right. So it's five acts in the first section, interval, then four acts. Is that good, everyone? Yeah. Are we good? We're only doing about five, ten minutes each. That's what it's all about. What I'm going to do is stop that, you weirdo. He's got a fucking cup in his mouth, right? Is it catching the drool? <laughs> He's got, oh, these, he's got these in himself, these uh, people have been on like a six week course with him. And then he's getting things up on him. Right! Right. Yeah, right. What's your name, by the way? Yeah. Yeah, of course it is. Fucking hell, I should have guessed at that, yeah. She's Just come on and try doing me. Right, like, right. Get over here we go, here we go. So massive support that I'm going to bring next on the rock roll. Okay, so we good, we good? Are we good? Right, here we go, here we go. Bull stands up, Bull stands up, raising funds for white kids. Right, okay, here we go. Our first act tonight. Bit more, bit more, bit more. Works as an MD at window the doors for you. Lives in Anfield. Local boy done good. Please welcome to the stage. Go wild and crazy for the wonderful Mr. Ronnie Orr! Oh, come on! Hey! Hello! Thanks, Fred! Hello, Sultan Tal, let's hear you, come on! No, no, we rehearsed this before, let's hear you, come on! Oh, thank you. When they said you're going to do the salt and tar, I thought it was something like a, a that you put on a boil on your arse to sort it out, but obviously it's not at a very plush pace like this. Anyway, it's great to be here. Thank you for coming and supporting us. First time on stage. Yeah, this is what shitting yourself looks like. Yeah. So, uh, Bren asked me to come and do some, uh, some comedy, but I actually volunteered to help out on a night like this. And then, and then he said, no, no, I want you to do the actual course. So six weeks, here I am, literally achieving a lifetime. So thank you very much for being here, and thanks for the empathy. Thank you very much. So, so when I was in boot last time, it actually brought back a lot of memories to me. I, uh, I actually bought my first three-piece suite from a place called Crazy George's here in the in the in the in the precinct. Yeah, in 1995. So I've only got two more payments, and it's finished then. <laughs> and I worked it out. I think I've paid. Forty-six thousand pounds for it, yeah. <laughs> for a fifteen hundred pound three-piece suite. Yeah, it would have been cheaper to go to the Colombian uh, drugs baron, the Pablo Escobar, say to get it paid off. Anyway, and then when I came in today, I looked at the tent here today. I must admit, I came out in a bit of a hot sweat. I thought I was out at another third wedding that I've got. Anyway, and I've only just got used to my own pension house and my car as well, but uh, anyway, uh, I just want to let you know, my name's Ronnie Orr, I I'm 62 years of age, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, what a way to start it. Anyway, so I, I like to keep myself fit, I, I go to the gym regularly, I, I eat healthy, I do a bit of cardio, I've got the tan and the teeth, and I've ended up looking like George Michael two days before he died. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. I'm one of, <laughs> yeah, I feel like that as well, to be honest with you. Anyway, so um, I'm one of 12 children. In fact, I'm the 12th of 12 children, so we don't need to go about no TVs and all that. And I was always told that was an afterthought, which really upset me. But it turns out, after the 7th, we were all told that. <laughs> anyway, so, and in our house, it's actually quite funny eating, because obviously, 12 of us, it's over three sittings. And we all eat alphabetically. And by the time our Zebedee got down, there was fuck all left for him to eat. Because Albert, the fat bastard, had ate it all. <laughs> yeah, unbelievable. So, uh, as a kid, uh, I went to school. Put your hand up, you to school. Okay, that's a few. I have to put their hand up. You obviously must have been to an approved school. If you don't know what that is, just get the woman next door to explain it to you. Anyway, so, so picture the scene. So I'm going to school, I don't realise what my first name is until I went to school. True story, so I wouldn't tell you a lie. So picture the scene, the teacher's calling the actual register out. So it goes something like this. Peter Himes, yeah. James Bennett, yeah. Sharon Coombe, yes, Miss I'm here, Miss. Multitasking already from a very early age. Yep, Ronnie O. I'm looking around like Stevie Wonder with ADHD. <laughs> Ronnie, are you here? Still nothing. So the teacher walks up to me and goes, What's your name, son? Fuck, okay, it's a flashlight. Little bastard, miss. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. 
bothers me, she said. That language is so... Please, we can't have that in the classroom. Go and stand outside, please. <laughs> so I stand outside, and I'm standing there, and then all of a sudden I heard footsteps coming down the corridor. I looked up, and the headmaster's there. I looked up. What are you doing standing outside? You should be in class learning. Why don't you open the door and turn around and go and sit down at your desk, you little bastard? <laughs> anyway, so, thank you. So where am I? <laughs> Hang on, I just need to refer to me notes. Just bear with me for one minute, sorry. So, have you ever been on a police ID parade before? Oh, there's an awful lot of liars in here. Anyway, it's good for me to be on the other side of an ID parade before. So if you haven't been on an ID parade, this is what happens. It goes something like this. I was, I was going round the corner the other day and uh, the police guy said to me, Ronnie, could you just favour me? Could you come and do an ID parade for us? I said, no, mate, I, I haven't got the time. I've got to get home. He said, well, we give you a jockey bar and a cup of tea. I said, look, mate, I've got to put the bins out. It's Thursday night. I can't do that. He said, well, actually, we give you 50 quid as well. He said, oh, well, I'll ring the missus, she can put them out, don't worry. So here's what happens. Nine members of the public and the accused, ten of you, are in a line. You're in a one-way mirror. You can't see them, but they can see you. And you're standing there, and this is all that's got to happen. Very simple. Three things. They've got to walk up and down, and then they've got to start, decide which one did the act. Then they've got to say to the copper, it's third from the left, and then they finger you. We're not in Cancel Farm, please. So just leave that on the other side. Anyway, so I walk in towards the door, and the policeman says to me, Ronnie, can I have a word, do you? So I said, yeah, sure. He said, listen, uh, I have a bit of bad news for you. I said, what's that? He said, uh, the fella said that you were the guy who done it. So he didn't get me a cup of tea, didn't get me 50 quid. I got banged up for nine months. Yeah, but, hey, here's, where, here's the kicker. The fella said, the guy you beat him up around the corner in the mitten looked like George Michael. Yeah. Bit of a throwback there. Anyway, I've got one last little story, then I'm through with this nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only kidding. This has been an absolute treat, honestly, I can tell you. So, so the last thing is, have you been watching the TV with the, this um, Russian Ukraine... Ucra oh, I'm sorry, I'm breaking these teeth in for Ireland. Hang on. <laughs> Ukrainian war. You can nod along if you want to. Audience participation, please. Anyway, so we got told by the politicians, the so-called politicians, the G7, as they're known as, that we'll get this sorted out. They said to me, a month or so, it's been over two years. So all the pontificating by the G7, they couldn't find a G-spot in a brothel if they tried. <laughs> but listen, I've got a bit of an idea. I think if we got a scouser in there to sort it out, I reckon we could kick him into shape within minutes. But not just any scouser. I think if my Nana Maggie was alive today, she'd sort him out. A formidable woman who was in a nighty for half of the day and pissed up on Liverpool gin the second half of the day. Right? And she looked just something like this. Picture the scene. Bleach blonde hair. Varagas veins in her forehead because of the menopause. Yeah? Drawn in scouse eyebrows which make her look permanently shocked even when she's asleep. Yeah? 44 double D boobs which look like missiles. Yeah? She's got all her tattoos spelt right and she's wearing armbands because of the hot sweat because she's a woman of a certain age. <laughs> and I think it goes something like this. Picture the scene. Putin's in his, in his office in the Kremlin, feet up on the, on the desk, gun in one hand, vodka in the other. Looking through his bifolding doors, because we've moved on from French doors now, haven't we? We've got bifolding doors now. And he's perusing out his empire, and he hears the rotor blades of a helicopter, so he goes out to investigate. And he's met with none other than menopausal Maggie parachuting down, Armed to the hill with a verbal attack and a baseball bat, quick as a flash, she's in for the attack. <laughs> hey, you soft shite. Who do you think you're pointing that gun at? Do you think that's going to scare me? Well, you got another thing coming, fella. Because I just come from another war zone. 
called Kirby. <laughs> you obviously have never been Christmas shopping at the Strand, have you, you nubhead? So why don't you just stay there and don't move a foot, otherwise I'll kill you all night. So we all know so either. Anyway, Nana Maggie's had three husbands, two have died and the other one won't. So here she is, she's running towards him, kicking and screaming, waving her arms in the air, and then she realised, or doesn't realise, sorry, that her left tit has fallen out, hit the floor, caused a ten on the Richter scale, and put Putin bang on his ass. Well, Putin is shitting himself. He's never seen a scouser before have a, a near heart attack and a near fit. She's right over him like this. You can have a look at me bald yet if you want. Well, I go, hey you, soft shite. Europe's hard Tennessee, you're not going any further, all right. So why don't you withdraw your troops now? Otherwise I'll give you a scout's kiss. Well, Putin is shitting himself. He decides that he's going to retreat because he knows there's a right tit attack about to come. <laughs> but he goes in for the kill. Hey, you. If you don't stop this war right now, I'm going to shove this baseball bat right up your jacksie dry. See how you like being invaded, loser. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I've been running all you. Thank you.